All right, today we have a 1903 slash 1911 inspired Izhevsk made Russian World War II TT-33. That's a mouthful, but we got one on the table for you guys. Cannot wait to show you the ins and outs of this gun, do a little bit of comparison with a gun that was uh, similar, all right, playing, played the same kind of role for another team, and uh, just show you uh, everything we know about it, a little bit of history, pros and cons, just the way we always do it, and uh, we're going to have fun with this. I told you guys in our recent Patreon update and channel update in general that changes were coming to the channel. Uh, you see a Russian Mosin Nagan up here. You see a World War II pistol on the table. We are branching out this year and doing some really cool things. So hopefully uh, you guys will will like this and enjoy it. Makes me nervous because this is outside of what we normally do. But man, it has really excited me to get some different stuff on the table. So now before we get too deep into this, I want to thank our patrons. Of course, we just did our update on Patreon. Uh, we reworked everything, made it a more personal Patreon for you guys. So check out those changes down in the description box. And at the end of the video is, is this a cheap copy of the 1911 or does it stand on its own? We'll talk about that, of course, uh, at the end. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about some of the specs of the TT-33. All right, and then we'll get into some history and other things. Uh, specs on the gun unloaded, 30.1 ounces, uh, overall length of 7.6 inches, barrel length of 4.6 inches, and a height of 5.3 inches. All right, so that kind of tells you where it fits, but let's bring in a competitor real quick, one that uh, fought alongside or against uh, the Russians in World War II. This is a German P-38, okay? World War II as well. Let's take a look just to see how the TT-33 Tokarov compares. You can see the Walther is a little bit longer. If we just put them slide to slide, not counting the uh, little bit of a beaver tail on the P-38. Uh, looking at the slides, you can tell how thin the Tokarov really was for its time. Very thin. And then I'll just briefly put them on their backs, and you can see... They're both about the same height, all right? The Tokarov is eight rounds, and so is the P-38, all right? This pistol's coming very soon as well to you guys in a review and probably a comparison with this gun because I think it'll be just awesome. So where did this pistol come from? So the Russians were looking for a design change. They were looking for a new service weapon to replace the uh, Nagant 1895 pistol. It had been around since 1895. So they were looking for something new. 1930, Fedor Tokarov came up with this design or one similar to it. And uh, they adopted it around 1936 or so. They actually uh, they started producing these things. Uh, I think its official adoption was in 1934 though. Some changes had to be made from the TT-30 uh, to what you see here though. So what they did is they made some changes with the trigger. Uh, they made some changes with the back strap. The original one had a back strap on it. And then they made some changes with the uh, locking lugs on the inside as well. And I'll show you guys all that. But basically what they wanted to do was simplify the production of the gun so they could make a bunch of them, which they eventually had to do. In 1941, they moved the production from the Tula plant to the Izhevsk factory and others uh, to get away from the advancing German troops. All right, so we'll talk a little bit more about the history of the gun, but uh, like I said, this is the Izhevsk model. It's got the little triangle in there. I'm going to show you guys some close-ups, of course, so you can see this stuff. You can tell the patina. Now, the story behind this particular gun, uh, this is a friend of mine. His dad served in World War II, and uh, this was a bringback. Now, the sad part about this is not only did he have this gun and other memorabilia, he had two Lugers that were actually stolen on his way back from the war. Man, would we love to have those back. Uh, they were stolen, unfortunately, so it's just one of those things. But uh, let's talk about, let's go around the gun and just take a look at some of the features. You can tell it's very 1903-ish uh, in the way it looks. It's got a very vertical grip, all right, which is, you know, kind of one of the uh, complaints on the gun. Rounded off trigger guard. You can see your trigger uh, right in there. Magazine release is just like any other magazine release that most Americans are used to today. 
All right, you can tell right there. You have your lanyard loop on the bottom. Now what's cool is this is a matching mag as well. You have your serial number on the TT33. They did serial number these of, uh, of 1219. You have 1219 on the uh, frame and then 1219 on the top of the slide. Again, we'll have some pictures rolling in for you guys so you can actually see it. And most of the guns that you'll see, like the reproductions and even the ones from the 50s and all those will have the, uh, the, re the uh, star in the grip. Uh, I believe from 42 to 45, they actually used these, uh, these wood panel style grips on it, which is pretty neat. Lanyard loop down here at the bottom. Clean back strap, of course, there is no adjusting of this back strap. You know, that's one of the features they took away. It is hammer fired, single action only. All right, so one thing you'll see with the imports today is they have to have some sort of a safety on them. Now, I think the, the Zestavas, I watched some videos by a few guys here on YouTube, they were able to get by with that because a lot of the imports you'll see, they'll have a safety here or safety here, and it just, it's just really ugly. Zestava put a like a dingus almost like a glock dingus to to bypass the ugly safeties of course this one no import marks no safeties because it was a gi bring back which is just awesome sights you can tell they are minimal there uh, you have your blade style sight there and in the front and uh actually it looks like they are dovetailed in and the front is uh is welded on there all right Extractor, external extractor, you can tell it's pretty small, but uh, through all of our shooting, we had no issues with it, which was pretty nice. We did run some surplus ammo. This is Romanian 762 by 25, a box of 72 actually, for not a bad price. Found that on Classic Firearm, which I have been getting into regularly since getting into surplus. It's been really exciting looking at all this stuff, and you can tell your little clip right there that retains your slide stop which we're about to show you here in a minute how to break that down all right so pretty simple in design uh if fedor tokarov was looking at the 1903 and 1911 uh that's not necessarily a bad thing uh because uh because those designs were just awesome and they worked uh one thing i didn't point out on this model like i said it's single action only you do have a half cock feature there so that'll disable the pistol or the trigger and the slide there. So you can't do anything with it. So the way they, they designed these guns to be ran, I guess you could run it a couple different ways. You could have the hammer down like that. You draw the gun out of a holster, rack around into the chamber, and then fire. Or you could have the hammer like that all the way up. Again, rack around into the chamber. You can see I had it on half cock there actually. And I probably still do. Let's try this without the mag. <laughs> it's it's a little bit tricky, man. Um, so you could have it like that. And then again, rack around into the chamber and then you're ready to fire. Basically, the point is, is this gun in this state is not safe to carry with a round in the chamber. Okay? And that's not the way they carried them. There was a lot of accidental discharges uh, back in the day and these times people carrying these guns because of that whole deal All right now one interesting thing about the TT 33 is the Wehrmacht actually captured uh, a number of these and they renamed them the Pistola 615 R And what's so cool man, I, I love this stuff so much is we actually have a holster now my buddy told me um and you can actually see he he carved his name <laughs> into it that is so cool he carved his name into the holster um as a bring back now i don't know if he found out about the lugers as soon as he got back or whatever but he probably carved his name into it so nobody else would steal his stuff but um anyways it, you know my buddy really didn't know a whole lot about the holster so what i was doing is i was just looking around and just looking at some things and I found this, and again, I'm going to do close-ups of all this stuff because it's going to really going to be hard to see on camera right here, but what I can tell from that is a uh, DLA-44, uh, and what's really cool is you have the Imperial Eagle, the German Eagle with the swastika, and it looks like a WAA 
195. So from my research, this holster was for the Browning High Power, which the German Army, I forget what they renamed it, but um, they actually used that gun as well. From the best I can tell, that's what this holster is for. It's not for a Luger, it's not for a P38, although I may have to talk to my buddy because my P38 fits really nice into this thing. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that, but it actually does fit pretty good in this thing. Um, you can tell right there. And I even carried this at the range, just like this. All right. Kind of difficult to do. You know, you could tell that the, this gun is a little bit smaller. So drawing it out of a holster like this, and then you got the little strap right there. And I'll show you guys this because I did some drawing out of the holster. But you just pull that down, get the gun out like that right there. Now, I believe the holsters for this gun actually had a cleaning rod slot on the side along with an extra magazine carrier right there. All right. Pretty, uh, pretty different than the holsters and stuff we carry today, but really nice, man. Just really nice craftsmanship. This stuff is just fascinating how, how good a quality this is. I mean, for being 75 years old, just, just amazing. Now, one thing that also the German army discovered is that the 762 by 25 round, uh, from what I know, is basically a modified 763 by 25 miles around. So when they captured a bunch of these, they were able to shoot their 763 by 25 miles around out of this gun. Now, you can't do that the other way around because this is a very high pressure 762 by 25 round. It's too high a pressure to shoot out of a out of a uh, Mauser gun, but there's your round right there. All right, and this thing, man, we're about to do some shooting. We're about to take you guys to the range. I, I'll just show you how it shot there. We won't talk too much more about that. Um, so they were able to to capture these and shoot their own ammo out of it. And you know, one thing about it is there is still copies of this gun made. To this day, uh, the Norinkos, the Sestavas, which are Yugoslavian, the Norinkos are Chinese. Uh, people are still making a version of this gun today. So it is. It has been around a long time, since 1930, really, till to, to present day here. All right, let's break the gun down here really quick. Show you how all that works. Of course, we, we already know it's clear. So you have your little clip over here, like I said, that's just going to slide back. You don't slide it all the way off. You just get it off this first little knot, uh, notch right here, which is attached to your slide stop. So I'll try to show you guys the best I can. You're going to take that. You're going to push down on the clip a little bit and kind of push it back. Sometimes I can actually get it to just slide right back. Other times, not so much. Of course, we don't want to mar it up any more than it's... I mean, this, this one's been around the block a little bit, that's for sure. There we go. Got it. Alright, so you slide it back. Once you clear that, okay. Then you're going to take the... I'm actually going to put this in half cock. There we go. You're going to push the slide stop out from the other side. You're going to take the barrel bushing here. This again where a 223 round actually really comes in handy. And I'm what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it. I'm going to hold it like this. I'm going to push it down, and just similar to a 1911. I mean, that's really all we're doing. Just pushing it around like that. And just making sure it doesn't fly out. Kind of like that. All right, barrel bushings out. We're good to go. Slide it off. There we go. All right. Not too bad. Once you get the hang of it, it can be a little bit trickier, especially getting it back together. There's your guide rod, there's your spring, grab the barrel bushing there, looks pretty familiar, huh? Alright, there's your barrel link, and one of the things they did to simplify production 
is they did have the half lugs on top here to match up with the frame on the or the inside of the slide like a 1911 to simplify the production they did a full 360 turn on the lugs right there and this is even serial numbered i don't know if we showed that i don't think yeah we couldn't show that um 1219 all matching gun how cool is that and i'm gonna try the best i can to actually get a shot of the rifling on the inside now one thing i noticed is the rifling actually looks pretty decent um it's just frosted up just a little bit okay you know again 75 years now one other cool thing about this gun that the uh, 1911 nor the 1903 actually had was the removable hammer assembly and what you want to do is you just want to pull up of course, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because the cameras are on. There we go. There's your whole hammer assembly and everything that just comes out, makes it super easy to clean, lube up, whatever you need to do. Sig thought they had a new thing with their P320. And look at these guys. They've been doing it for a long time, way before Sig Sauer was doing it. How cool is that? Now, one other thing about the grips is they're actually held on by little tabs on the inside of the gun. Okay, so there is no, it looks like a screw, but it's not a screw. It's actually held on with little tabs. So pretty neat. Put this back in here. Get this thing put back together. Got our hammer packed down. All right. One thing about having these, especially these older guns, it's a borrowed gun. Oh, man, it gets kind of nerve-wracking. It really does, because you never know what can happen. All right, so we're going to put the barrel back in. Of course, have the link down. Then we're going to flip it up. Right, I'm going to go ahead and put the barrel bushing back on there, so it'll keep the guide rod in place. And there might be easier ways to do this, but I, I've done this a couple times. It's really not difficult. It's just a matter of getting everything lined up. So you got the curved edge right there. That's obviously going to go down towards the towards the pistol. You're going to put the spring in there. All right. And it's, it's just a matter... I'm going to try to do this with my right hand so you guys can kind of see what's going on. I'm going to try to hold the link up. And I'm just going to push it in there and you want to definitely hold it away from your face and that link that link will definitely get on your nerves okay, let's try this again okay sounded pretty good so you're going to hold it in place like that you can tell i mean you let go of that thing the spring is going wherever it's going to go in your eye or wherever so just hang on to it all right line that link up so you can get your slide stop in there like that make sure it's in there and then you're going to push your clip forward again just like that function check we're good all right so not too bad done that a couple times by the way so uh, it takes just a little bit of practice but not too bad at all all right so there are the basics of the tt33 let's take you guys to the range with us we had a an extra guest with us uh my son so i'll even show you how um our 11 year old did with that 762 by 25 round. We'll see you guys in a minute.
Nice. That's what I'm talking about. And he baby. took his fingers off the trigger Good every shot. time until he shot again. Do you see nice. that? You want to shoot it again? Mm-hmm. All right. Let's try this baby out. Uh-oh. Mag wasn't seated all the way. There we go. Stripped around. Not gonna load it here. Let's try this again. We're gonna we see a German right in front of us. Alright, not too bad. Definitely would prefer carrying it with a round in the chamber. Um, they may have even, to be honest with you, they may have even kept it half cocked like that because that disables everything and then draw it out of the holster cock the hammer back I you know I'm not sure but in in order to carry this gun with a round in a chamber uh, you got to take some extra precautions because again it's not import marked but I just wanted to really show you guys my my fancy new holster that I got for this thing it even has a, a magazine pouch there so it's pretty pretty neat We got the TT-33 Russian Tokarov out here today, and uh, we're gonna take uh, some 40-yard shots. We actually, we actually had to move the target back a little bit and kind of prop it up against the tree because we're also shooting the Mosin today. But I wanted to take some shots with this guy and see how it does at 40 plus yards. It's actually probably I don't know 45 yards now, but let's give it a shot. Let's go up there and take a look and see what we did. All right, so we are shooting down this way. So what I started doing it, because I think I was throwing the rounds right over the top, I started kind of aiming down here and I was aiming to the left a little bit because I'm pulling to the right, so kind of give it a fair enough shake. And you can see I actually lobbed some rounds in here in a pretty nice group at that far away. And then I was hitting over to the right again on this side of the plate. So. This is outside of the scope of this gun, but I just wanted to see what it could do if I was doing my part, and it, it did pretty well. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, the gun is, I mean, it's 75 years old, and it's still shot. I mean, the last time my friend actually shot it has been forever ago, is what he told me. And this is the first time this gun has been shot in a very long time, and... It just, it shot amazing. Now, one thing I had to do is I had to adjust a little bit because um, the sights and the trigger, you know, just a little bit different, you know, and I was, I, I believe I was kind of pulling off to the right a little bit, low and to the right, you know, which for a right-handed shooter is not common. So um, just getting used to the trigger. I mean, really, that was, that was the biggest thing. You know, you have that pretty, pretty deep curve in the trigger right there, you know, so it, it's a little bit different, but man... <laughs> 
75 year old gun and i think it just it did it did awesome let's show you the trigger here really quick just show you how that looks all right you got a little bit of take up and it breaks right there and the trigger reset right there pretty much all the way out all right we're not expecting competition triggers here guys let's test the weight and see where we're at i'd imagine about seven pounds eight pounds 14 ounces okay a little bit heavier than i thought eight pounds nine ounces so right under nine ounces which i'm sure for that time was pretty acceptable so notice the slide serrations too here they changed them after the war and some of the variations now are different but this is a World War II style serration. And I think they even used them like, or they made them like this before World War II a little bit too. So pretty nifty there. But overall, the gun did really good. We even tried it at 45 yards, showed you guys those shots. Now, one thing you'll notice throughout the, you know, throughout the war, the production kind of got a little, uh, I, I won't say bad, but, you know, they didn't take as much time making sure everything was you know, finished and, you know, everything was pristine, you know, you can tell you have some, some tooling marks here and all that kind of stuff. And they, they were just trying to pump out guns. And this was designed to take over for the 1895 Nagant revolver. Uh, when in fact, both guns were made side by side because they just, they needed that many guns, especially after the Germans invaded them. All right. So, uh, both guns were made side by side. Um, all the way through the war. And this gun was actually made up until 1952. At least the Russians made it until 1952. And then it was taken over by the Makarov. All right. Which you guys are probably familiar with. And uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to review one of those here in the near future. But the gun shot awesome. Uh, it really does not feel like an almost nine pound trigger. I mean, it really doesn't. All right. Uses now. For a World War II type of gun like this, I mean, this is a, this is a, a, every once in a while maybe type of shooter, and definitely a collectible. Now you can have these things. You can get like the Sestava and other models that are kind of the 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 copies of this gun, if you will, for 200, 250 bucks. The World War II models that I've seen are up there like 800 to a thousand dollars so this is a whole different price gun uh you know when it's made in world war ii which you know makes sense all right so what about pros and cons and and just keep in mind that when i'm doing these pros and cons i am i am considering the age of the gun as well so if there's a con and you're like dude it's 75 years old well you know i get it i'm just kind of telling you what we seen as a con you know you know, try not to try not to take age as a factor. You know, just looking at it through today's lens, I guess you can say. Uh, first of all, is the round itself. The 762 by 25 was used in the PPSH. This round is awesome. It's known to pierce some levels of body armor. The round is a fast moving round. I think what we shot was rated at around 1500 or so uh, feet per second, which is it's moving. All right, the round is awesome, but it's also easy to shoot. So it's not like it's a big old 30 cal round that, you know, is hard to handle. I mean, you've seen even my 11-year-old just handling the gun uh, like a champ. I mean, it really is just a pleasure to shoot this gun. Uh, the removable trigger pack and, and, you know, some of the features of this gun are actually pretty ingenious, you know, for the time period that we're talking about. You know, it's not like they made an exact copy and just, you know, made it in Russia. They actually did some things that were different, and uh, I can appreciate that. And then some of the models, the World War II models, uh, even these, you can still find these, but the, the non-World War II models, you can still get these guns uh, at a great price. And to be honest with you, it was one of the guns that helped us defeat Nazi Germany, which is always a good thing, all right? Uh, that, along with the Mosin Nagant, and of course the Allies and the, you know, the Americans, the M1, well, you know, Russia was a part of the Allies, but you know what I'm saying, the Americans with the M1 Garand and the 1911, this was a part, this was one of the guns that helped defeat Nazi Germany, which was, which was an awesome thing. 
Uh, as far as cons, again, we talked about the age, but you know, right now the mag release, all right, the magazines don't just pop out of the gun. Uh, that lanyard loop actually makes quite a bit of difference. Miss Tech Shot doesn't like it because when you go to hit the bottom of the magazine, you know, it kind of leaves a little indention in your hand, but uh, the mags don't just pop right out. You actually have to, to pull them out. Um, I think the biggest con is there's no safe way to carry with a round in the chamber. There's really not. I mean, you have to carry this gun. I hope people wouldn't carry this gun because this is this is a collector's piece. This is a piece of history. Maybe some of the cheapers, the Stavas and all that kind of... Yeah, yeah definitely. But something like this, you wouldn't want this to be taken away if you ever had to use it in self-defense. I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. But um, there's no safe way to carry this particular model um, with a round in the chamber. And the breakdown can be a little cumbersome. You know, you get used to it. It's not bad at all. You just see me do it. Um, and the vertical grip, a little bit different. That's for sure. I mean, this gun, pulling it up, you got to get used to that vertical grip and just getting your sights on target. But overall, what an awesome gun. And <laughs> as ugly as it may look, it really, when you spend some time with it and you realize how good of a shooter it is, it really makes up for the looks. I mean, it really does look like a 1903, an FN model 1903. It really does. But it's such an awesome shooter with some great design features. And is, I guess the main question, is this a cheap copy of the 1911? Um, yes and no. Uh, it's a cheap copy of the model 1903 in a way. But Fedor Tokarov, I think, did some really cool things that kind of set this gun apart that we've already talked about in the video. And uh, I think over time, it has definitely held its own as being a different gun. Although being inspired by an awesome gun inventor, Mr. John Browning, in the 20th century. So, nothing to really complain about there. I love this gun, guys. I hate that I have to give it back. <laughs> but I'm so glad we had the opportunity to take this thing out, run some rounds through it, and appreciate it. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it up, give it back to the owner. Uh, we are going to do a comparison, I think, with the P38. So let me know if you guys want to see that video review down in the comments below. We will see you guys on the next one. And as always, hold them down.